right, pal. You don't want a deal? Forget it. Ray! You nuts! He's a cop! Now, what are you gonna do with him? I'm gonna give him... some of his own merchandise. I want you to go with me to that assembly this morning and talk to him. I can't do that. I can't go back there. They think I'm the enemy. I'm a narc. And what's wrong with that? My friend's lying in a hospital right now because he believed in what you were doing. Stop pulling on yourself, you look fine. Well, I don't feel fine. Some people were not meant to wear ties. You're a police officer talking to high school kids. You should look respectable. Maybe if you could find a tie in a different color, something a little more subdued. I like this color. I'm afraid of that. I'm sorry it's come to this. Police on campus. Woodbury student died of a drug overdose, Mr. Easton. Rhonda Blake's death has been the most painful experience of my 11 years at Woodbury. However, it has been my contention all along that Rhonda's death was an aberration. She never really fit in here. She didn't get the cocaine that killed her from the tooth fairy, you know? No, you can't be certain that it was anyone from Woodbury. That's why Officer Kelly's here. Mm. I... Don't suppose you know how long you'll be staying here? As long as it takes. Well, I guess you'll want to meet the faculty. I uh, would like to introduce uh, Officers Smith and Gordon. They're police drug counselors. They'll be talking to the students on a group and individual basis about the dangers of drug abuse. Are they going to be just canceling, or are they going to be making arrests? That all depends what we find out. Well, the students at Woodbury aren't stupid. You have to earn their trust to be effective. Oh, with help from you and the other teachers, I hope we can. The school board is behind Officer Smith and Gordon 100%, Miss Swan. Well, I have no intention of using my classroom as a lineup for the sake of a jittery school board. We're not here to help the school board, Miss Swan. We're here to help the students. So are we, Mr. Smith. <laughs> That's an interesting invitation. It's from Ray. His parties are outrageous. I can believe it. 
Hey, why don't you go with me? All the in crowd will be there. Sure, why not? I could use a break. Good. Do we need to bring anything? No, Ray takes care of all the entertainment. And the, uh, refreshments? What kind of refreshments? Well, you name it and Ray can score it. At least he couldn't tell Rhonda. Look, we better be quiet. <laughs> I hear there were narcs everywhere. You're busted. <laughs> introduce you to Officer Smith and Gordon from the police department. They're here to talk to you about drugs on campus and off. We're going to be setting up an office at the end of the hall. If any of you would like to talk to us privately about a drug problem or about someone you know who has a drug problem, our doors will be open. We don't like snitches. Drugs are a disease, not a schoolyard game. I think what Miles meant was that history's heroes don't name names. History's heroes don't deal drugs either. How's business? Oh, just terrific. When I've been here three hours, one kid has come through that door wanting to see the school nurse. How about you? I've been all over campus. About the same with me. What's the matter with them? After everything they've heard. I mean, entertainers dying, athletes dying, lives ruined. I mean, why won't they listen? I guess when you're a teenager, you think you're indestructible. Come on, you've seen them flying down the freeway on a motorcycle, cutting in and out of cars, no helmet, no nothing. And ten years later, they look back and say, I can't believe I did that. Oh, yeah, they look back all right still alive. Oh. Here you go. Thanks. Don't I get a reward? I quit. How about lunch? I don't know, my friends, huh? You can eat with them anytime. But not with you. I've got a busy schedule. Oh, that's right. I saw you on television the other day. Woodbury All-American signs letter of intent. Hmm. I don't know why you want to hang out with those creeps anyway. They're fun. Yeah, the in crowd, the in love with themselves crowd. So you're gonna have lunch with me or not? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Where you going? Firing range. You know, with the job you're doing, it shouldn't make you take firing practice. It's all you can do to fill out your reports and uh, do your homework. <laughs> Well, to tell you the truth, Dad, I kind of like going down to the range, being with people my own age, even if they are cops. How are things going at Woodbury? Pretty good. I've been invited to a party tomorrow night, and I'm pretty sure it's the same kids we're after. Oh, by the way, I might have to give out the phone number again so the kids could be calling. The department ought to put me on overtime. <laughs> well, I'll tell Lieutenant Hayward you asked. You know better to get me started on Bill Hayward. How are your new backups, uh, Smith and Gordon? They're fine. There's no problems. You know, they're transfers. I couldn't find out much about them. Dad, they're fine. Really. You'd like Gordon. He's like you. He's so old-fashioned. Thinks a woman's place is in the kitchen baking cookies instead of out on the streets fighting crime. Well, you know, your mother wanted you to be a ballet dancer. <laughs> now, Daddy, everybody knows the Irish only do the jig. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I'll see you later. Hey, Denise. Hi. What time am I picking you up tonight? I didn't know we had a date. Oh, didn't I tell you yesterday at lunch? Uh-uh. I guess you were too busy eating all those sandwiches. <laughs> well, I am a growing boy. I'll pick you up at 8.30. There's a good movie at the Globe. Well, you can come by my house, but I won't be there. I'm going to a party. Oh, well, a party? Whose party? Ray Russo's. Oh. What's wrong? 
I told you that yesterday. Yeah, well, I pick my own friends. So do you want to go or not? Well, if you're inviting me. I am. It starts at 8. Okay, I'll pick you up 10 to 8. Where do you live? Why don't I meet you there, okay? Here's my phone number, just in case you can't make it. Don't worry. I'll be there. Mm. I'll see you there. Hey, why don't you just watch where you're going, Parker, huh? Sorry, Russo. You should get some meat on those bones. Coming in loud and clear. All right, boys and girls, showtime. Well, she talks a good game. I hope she can play one. That hasn't been easy for her. Why? Because her father's a cop? No, because her brother was a cop. I didn't know she had a brother. He was killed in the line of duty five years ago. Oh, I couldn't find the right lipstick. Oh, yeah. My mom's always stealing mine. Yeah? <laughs> Come on in. You're talking about lipstick. <laughs> I guess there's no law against that. Oh, cute, Jenna. Cute. <laughs> Glad you can make it. Oh, thanks, son. Do your parents always let you have parties in their house? No, oh, you know, only when they're out of town. <laughs> Sure does seem like a long way from school. Well, that's the way it's supposed to seem. Isn't this Northrop album fantastic? <laughs> See, Northrop knows where it's at. It's because they like allow the human mind to uh, expand its fullest. Well, with a little help from their friends. <laughs> you know, many artists throughout history believed in drugs. Aldous, Huxley, Conan Doyle. I mean, it is a noble tradition. <laughs> Not every person can handle drugs. I mean, it does take a certain sophistication, a certain emotional stability. So not for everyone. They weren't for Rhonda Blake. How does somebody know when they're ready for drugs? You know, somebody like me. Well, we'll let you know. Well, what if I can't wait? You'll wait. Hey, Denise! Who invited Mr. All-American? Oh, I did. He's my date. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't know that you weren't friends. Oh, well, now you do. Hey, what trouble? I'm your man. You better go, hero. I'm not going anywhere without you. Why don't you let me talk to him for just a minute outside, okay? 
You're not getting rid of me that easily. Hey, I'm getting rid of both of you. So next time, just ask me first before you invite your friend here. Adios. Adios! Shannon? She's leaving. Where are you going? Home. I thought we had a date. Why did you come to the party if you knew that was going to happen? I came to protect you. Those guys are the sleaze patrol. Guess you ended up protecting me. Good night, Mike. Wait, it's early. You could still catch a movie or... Go up to Perspiration Point and watch the flying saucer races. Take it easy, Romeo. What's the matter? You afraid something might happen? I've been known to have that effect on girls. Mike, you're a very good-looking guy. But... Brother, this is a waste of tape. I and mean, this guy isn't interested in drugs. So come on. You like my looks, and I really like yours, so come on. Look, you're not my type, all right? So why don't you just give it up? I didn't have to break my arm. Good night, Mike. Denise isn't here. Uh, who is this? Ken Stewart. Oh, listen, I'll uh, I'll tell her you. Hold on, wait a minute. Hold on a minute, buddy. I think she just came in. Denise. Yeah, Dad. Uh, pick up the phone. Hello. Hello. How'd it go? Not too well, Dad. Who was that on the phone? Oh, some friend of yours to be cat me. Uh, Ken something. Ken Stewart. Didn't you talk to him? Dad, I didn't know any Ken Stewart at the Academy. You didn't? Mm-mm. Will you get some sleep, okay? Denise, you don't think that's one of those kids? No. Dad, they wouldn't be that smart. Good night. <laughs> How'd you make out with Denise the other night? That's my business. Oh, sorry. I just wonder what it was like making out with a narc. What? You heard me. You've been used by a narc. What are you smoking, man? You know your girlfriend? Denise? She's a cop. And that makes you a prize, chum. Maybe you're a cop too, huh, Parker? Officer Denise Kelly. Let's see, graduated police academy last year. Now, if you don't believe me, why don't you just ask her for yourself? Hey, she's worse than a cop. She's a narc. You've been had, lover boy. Let's say uh, you've been working with her. 
She came on to me. I didn't know she was a cop. She came on to me. Sure she did. Sucker. All right, what's going on? I'm afraid that certain students have discovered Miss Kelly's identity. Then, under the circumstances, the faculty and I think that it's better if Denise leave school. Now, how'd they find out? It was my students who uncovered Kelly. Tony Brandt, Ray Russo, and Billy Bates came to me this morning. They said that she had been asking about drugs, wanting to know where she could score some coke. The good stuff. They said she sounded like a narc. That's when I went to Eastwood. When I told him that she had been seen with Mike Parker, kissing him, touching him, pretending to be his girlfriend... That's a lie! I had no choice but to clear the air. And Mike Parker's mother is on her way down right now. Now, oh, Mr. Eastwood, don't you think it would have been a little better to talk to Denise before starting to call faculty parent meetings? And there were plenty of witnesses. Tony, Miles, Ray. I saw Denise and Mike passing notes in the hall myself. Mr. Eastwood. Ah, oh, Mrs. Parker. I'm glad you could come down on such short notice. Mm -hmm. Is this the policewoman who was touching my son? The only time she touched your son was to push him away, Mrs. Parker. Who are you? My name's Jonathan Smith. I've been Officer Kelly's backup here at Woodbury. Oh. So you're a cop, too? And you expect me to believe you? I expect you to believe your son. Where's my son? Where's Michael? I'll get him. He's across the hall. Would you mind my asking you your age? Not at all. I'm 21. My son is still a minor. And there are laws to protect him against people like you. I won't dignify that remark with a reply. Well, maybe you will when I get you in court. I know you're tired, young lady. You were the kind of girl that could never get a boy like Michael, a popular boy, when you were in school. But now that you're a little older and you have a little more experience... All right, wait a minute, Miss Parker. I think you've said enough. Why don't we wait till we hear all the facts? Mom. It's all right, son. You've done nothing to be ashamed of. It's all right. Look, you, uh, you didn't have to come down here. I have no intention of letting this woman get away with this. Now, Mike... Uh, as you know, some very serious allegations have been made concerning Officer Kelly's conduct here at Woodbury. Now, Mike, you know the truth, so just tell them. I thought she liked me, but she was just using me. I yes, but did she make a pass at you? Did she kiss you or let you kiss her? Yeah, plenty of times. She couldn't keep her hands off me. He's lying! Mark, did you bring the tape? Listen, Denise. What tape? I was wired the night I went to Ray Russo's party. And that tape will prove that I told your son to buzz off. Well, Officer Gordon, I guess we have no choice but to hear the tape. Catch a movie or go up to Perspiration Point and watch the flying saucer races. Take it easy, Romeo. What's the matter? You afraid something might happen? I've been known to have that effect on girls. Mike, you're a very good looking guy, but. What happened? What happened to the tape? I, uh. I killed it. I thought the stakeout was off. Of course you killed it. He's a cop. He's protecting another cop. I'm going to go to the press with this outrage, and I intend to see that you lose your badge over this. Now, wait a minute, lady. Denise was on campus to try to bust the drug pushers who killed one of your son's classmates. I mean, we are the good guys. Well, suppose we let the public be the judge of that, hmm? I read your report, Denise. To those of Smith and Gordon. Unfortunately, Mike Parker's mother plans to press charges. There might even be a case for statutory rape. 
That's a Tory rape. What are you talking about? She never touched him. If I hadn't screwed up... The reports will be taken into consideration when the review board meets next week. Ray and his friends set me up about this. They're lying. And what about Parker? You said yourself he has nothing to do with the druggies. Why is he lying? I don't know. No, wait a minute. You're going to take the word of those drug pushers instead of my daughter? Don't be ridiculous, Sergeant. We're following departmental policy. Denise is on suspension until the review board meets next week. Hey, what I always said, that you didn't have enough guts. All right, Jack, Jack, take it easy. If you're mad at anybody here, it should be me. Jonathan and I will go by the school, see if we can talk to the kid. There's no rough stuff, Gordon. I've got enough problems. Oh, is that what I am, Lieutenant? A problem? Denise? Let's get out of here. I made a mess out of this assignment. Supposed to protect Denise, I end up getting her suspended. Come on, it's not your fault. There's no way you could have known that tape was important. That is not the point, Jonathan. The point is, I'm a cop. I was a cop. Cops do their job. You do not turn off backup surveillance because you don't think it's important. Down to pump some iron, Mr. Smith. Why'd you lie about Denise, Mike? I didn't lie. I told you. She came on to me. She couldn't keep her hands off me. You like the night she almost broke your wrist? What's the matter? You're so insecure you can't handle it when a girl rejects you. I can handle anything. She used me. She used you to try to build her cover. She was trying to break a drug ring. She was doing her job. Yeah, I'm trying to do my job. And that's play football and keep my scholarship. Because some jobs in life are more important than others. You mean being a cop? I mean telling the truth. You calling me a liar? Oh, you bet I am. Lucky for you, you're wearing that badge. No, sir. Lucky for you. I disagree completely with the tactics used by the police. Having officers pose as students is offensive and creates a very bad environment on campus. But what about the drug problem at Woodbury? I mean, one of your students died last month as a result of a drug overdose. Yes, well, no one is more concerned about the drug problem in our school than I am. But one isolated case is hardly cause to put everyone under suspicion. The answer to drug abuse is education, not entrapment. I'd love to see the look on that narc's face when they pulled her badge. Good old Swanee. You know, I don't know how we could stay in business without her. She thinks we're the perfect students. Not to mention that dumb cop, Gordon, turning off the wire. <laughs> what do you want? What are you doing here? Just came to talk a little business. I don't do business with cops. Hey, you do with me, Bob. I saved your butt today. <laughs> How's that? Rosemary Wood's not the only one who knows how to erase tapes. You erase that tape? Why? I told you. Business. What kind of business? <sighs> this kind. Got your little sample. Taste it. Not bad. Better than anything you've ever played with. And there's plenty more where that came from. And it's priced to move. Yeah, well, I don't know. 
Hey, look, kid, I went to a lot of trouble to set this up. In this business, you either move up or you move out, so make up your mind. Well, the stuff is mighty fine. Should be. From the police property room. Now, listen, if you want to see more of this stuff, meet me in the Woodbury parking lot in an hour. Bring a lot of money. Dude, you're not going to meet him. Stuff is awful good. Yeah, but he's a cop. A cop who has breaking every law in the books. He's pushing stolen property. How can we lose? Show up. Bring the cash. You got the stuff? Let's go over the bleachers. That way I know your partner isn't around. Not very trusting, are you? Not when it comes to cops. Hey, come on, what is this? All right, pal, you don't want a deal? Forget it. He's a cop! What do we have here? He's wearing a wire. Looks like Officer Gordon here was playing Lone Ranger. Now, what are you gonna do with him? We're gonna give him some of his own merchandise. Sure you don't want some coffee? Called a special assembly at the school. Let's see if we can find out anything. Danny was in a coma for five days before he. Well, they never did get the junkie that killed him. If Mark doesn't come out of it, we may never get Ray Russo either. It had to be Ray and his friends. Hayward knows that. But he can't prove it. That's why I came here this morning to ask you for help. Help? To recruit witnesses. What witnesses? The students at Woodbury High. What does this have to do with me? I want you to go with me to that assembly this morning and talk to him. Try to convince him to come forward and testify against Russo and the others. Without Mark, they're our only chance. I can't do that. I can't go back there. They think I'm the enemy. I'm a narc. And what's wrong with that? 
My friend's lying in a hospital right now because he believed in what you were doing. Because he felt responsible for your suspension. Now, well, maybe cops believe in what we're doing, but nobody else does. Not the kids, and not even some of the teachers. Oh, then what do we do, Denise? We just give up? Being a cop is a thankless job. If you didn't know that from the beginning, you never should have become one. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't be a cop. And maybe my brother shouldn't have been one either. Your brother was a cop because he wanted his kid's sister to grow up in a better world. He wanted to grow up in a society that was clean, where people had a chance. Where did that get him? Dead. And who cares, hmm? Who cares? Or you go find somebody else to fight this war, because I'm done with it. I'll tell you somebody who cares, Denise. My best friend lying in a coma, he cares. And I'll tell you something else, if he ever comes out of that coma, He's not going to stop fighting this war. Three days ago, a police undercover officer, Denise Kelly, was suspended from the force because of lies told about her by some of the students in the school. Last night, my partner was beaten and injected with an overdose of drugs. He's in a hospital in a coma, as I speak to you now. Those responsible for that are in this auditorium right now. And one girl has already died at Woodbury. How many more students have to die before you stop hiding behind your parents and your teachers and your friends? Now, you give a lot of lip service about how much you care about each other. Well, now is the time to prove it. By stepping forward and naming those who are dealing drugs at Woodbury. those who are killing your friends and maybe mine. Most of you already know me. Or at least you think you did. I'm a narc. I became a narc because I hate drugs. Five years ago, my brother was killed in a shootout with a junkie. The junkie was never charged because his friends gave him an alibi and he paid them back in drugs. My brother's name was Danny. to see him. I thought you were in a... In a coma? Afraid not. My partner said that to get a few more people to testify against you. You know how courts are. You need every witness you can get. Well, I didn't want Ray to sh shoot you up. You were there. It's all the same. Attempted murder, kiddo. They're gonna put you away for a long time. Well, I couldn't stop him. I can now. Tell him what happened. If you cooperate, you're going to get off a lot easier. Think about it, Billy. Think about it. When you're a kid, 
You never think about the consequences of anything. Nothing can ever happen to you. You'll never get pregnant, so sex is okay. You'll never get in an accident, so speeding's okay. You'll never OD, so drugs are okay. Those things can only happen to another person. Well, that's what Rhonda Blake thought. But we're all that other person. I lied to some of you, and I used you, and it probably hurt. But I didn't kill you. One of your own did that. I only came here to try to keep it from happening again. But I can't do that now. Only you can do that. It was Ray. Ray Russo shot up that cop with drugs. I swear to God, I told him not to. We argue somewhere else, we. Sorry. I smell food. I'm starving. 